So, a 2 kilogram block is resting on top of a 5 kilogram block, and an applied force is being applied to the 5 kilogram block. There is a force of friction between the two, and the coefficient is 0 0.1. For the time being, we're going to assume there is no friction between the bottom block and the ground. The mu there is 0. But don't worry, we'll make it something in part 2. The question is, what is the maximum force we can apply to the bottom block such that the top block doesn't slip? If we push hard enough, the 5 is going to slide right out from underneath the 2, and the 2 is going to appear to slide backwards off the 5. Now, it's not really going to slide backwards, right? It's going to slide forward, but not as quickly as the 5, so it will come off the back. Hopefully that makes some sense to you. How do we figure out what that maximum force is that we can apply? other than just kind of guessing and checking. Well, the key is, first of all, to look at the top block. So, over here I'll draw a free body diagram of the top block. What forces are there on it? Well, there's gravity, of course. Fg, which is 19.6. You know what, I'm just going to call it 2Gs. Okay, fine. And there's a normal force. I'm not drawing this to scale. We'll see what the normal force actually is. Is there an applied force to the top block? No, because nobody's pushing on the top block. Is there tension or anything? Anyone pulling that with a rope? No. So the only other force really left is friction. Is there friction? Yes, of course there is. We have a mu, there's going to be a friction. Okay, so then the question is what direction is it in? And that's not obvious to people. They usually think that friction is what slows things down or stops them from moving. But in this case, if there was no friction, then when we push the bottom block, it would slide out in the top block, which has inertia. If there was no friction, it would just stay exactly where it was and then fall down due to gravity after that. But it doesn't, right? If we push gently on the bottom one, they'll slide together. They'll accelerate to the right together up to a certain point. So what's pushing the top block to the right? The only force that could be doing it is the force of friction. And that's how we're going to find the maximum applied force. We're going to ask ourselves, what's the maximum acceleration that friction can cause for the top block? Because friction is the only thing that's making it move. Is this mu s or mu k? Are they moving relative to each other? They're not, so this must be the static friction. We're trying to find how quickly they have to accelerate before static friction can no longer keep up. So we've got to use, well obviously we've got to use the formulas in frame here. I think I'm more or less in frame. Let's just write that a little bigger. Fn. We have to decide which way is x and which way is y. So that's that. In the y direction, I think we can see that Fn minus Fg equals 0. So we can see that Fn will in fact equal 2g's in this case. So they don't look equal, but they actually are equal. And then that leaves us with simply the x direction. And in the x direction, I think we can see that ff equals ma. But ff, of course, is mu fn. And remember, mu fn, when we're talking about static friction, is the maximum value. If they're not accelerating at all, the friction would be zero. Because it wouldn't be needed. Okay, so that's the maximum value. So when I find this acceleration, I'm going to find the maximum acceleration that friction can cause. Fn is also 2g, so we've got mu 2g equals 2a. My 2s are gone, it doesn't matter what the mass is. And the acceleration is going to be 0.1 times 9.8, or 0 0.98 meters per second squared. That, as I said, is actually the maximum a that friction can cause. So now I just have to look at the whole thing and ask myself, how hard can I push on the bottom block before the whole thing goes at 0.98? So that's no big deal then. So I'm going to take a look at the whole thing as one. So I'll draw a free body diagram, but instead of 5 or 2, I'm going to put a mass of 7. It's the total mass of the total object. I've got an applied force, which is to the right. I've got a normal force. I've got gravity. That says G. As long as it doesn't slip, then the friction on each object, I means their law, we'll get to that in a second, they're going to cancel out, aren't they? So I can just look at the whole thing and ignore the friction in between, because it's an internal force. It doesn't actually affect the situation at all. 
I've already defined my x and y direction, and I'll just stick with that so I can see that fa must in fact be equal to ma. I can also see that fn minus fg must equal 0, that fn equals 7 g's, but that doesn't really help me very much here. So my applied force is going to be 7 times 0.98. And that's the maximum applied force, because, well, what is that first of all? 6.86. So if I apply anything between 0 and 6.86, the acceleration will be less than 0.98, which means that mu fn, the friction, can equal what it needs to be to make that thing accelerate the same rate as the whole group. Is it? Not quite straightforward, but hopefully comprehensible. Now that's only part A. The question is, what's the maximum applied force before this thing causes, before this top guy slips back? But wouldn't it be interesting if there was a part D? And part B, which of course there is, is what if the applied force is 10 newtons? Well, what if? Well, what's the actual question? The question is, if we apply a force of 10 newtons, then what would be the acceleration of the 5 kilogram object? Of course, to calculate that, I'm going to need to draw a free body diagram of the 5 kilogram object, which seems simple enough, but it is actually a little bit tricky the first time. I hope that once we've done one, you can understand. Obviously, there's gravity, that's no big deal, Fg, and of course, there's a normal force, okay, Fn. And I can probably even go so far as to say that they're going to be equal, right? Fn minus Fg, this thing is going to the right. but I'd be making a mistake. Good. My physics teacher taught me, and I teach my kids, not to assume they're going to be equal, because it's just asking to mess things up, and if I hadn't taken my own advice, I would have just made a mistake. Okay, okay. What other forces are there on the five kilogram object? There's at least two. One, there's friction. Which way is friction? It's got to be to the left. Why does it have to be to the left? Because the friction on this guy was to the right. Who is applying that force? The 5 kilogram object. If the 5 kilogram object pushes the top one to the right, the Newton's third law says the top one must be pushing the bottom one in the opposite direction. Okay. So it's going to be mu fn, mu 2g. Okay. Um, I was just trying to think what that is. 1.96? 19.6 times 0.1. Okay. So there's going to be friction backwards on this guy. Obviously, there's an applied force to the right, which is equal to 10. That's a given from the question. But I'm still not done because I still haven't actually accounted for all the forces. Might not give me a problem in this particular question, but I want to get my free body diagram right. Imagine you're the 5 kilogram object. Somebody is pushing you to the right. Gravity is pulling down on you. The floor is pushing up on you. But also the 2 kilogram object is pushing down on you. And of course it's smushing you to the left, and that's the friction. The 2 kilogram object is also pushing down. What do I want to call that? Fn2? I'll just call it 2 g's. I hope you can see. I'll use two little red slashes to show that this force is equal to this force. Which is of course equal to that force, it's 2 g. This is the Newton's third law reaction to the normal force. The bottom block is pushing up on the top block. So Newton's third law says the top block must push down the bottom block with the same force. So if I was to calculate the normal force, it wouldn't be 5 g's at all, would it? It would be 7 g's. Fn minus Fg minus 2g equals 5a. Sorry, equals 0. Equals 0. And therefore Fn would end up being 7 g's. And that doesn't matter in this question at all because mu here was zero, so we don't really need that. But once you're done this, you're probably going to do part two and you will need to understand that. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Now we just look at the x-direction equation and we can say to ourselves, my x-direction is still to the right, I've had the same coordinate system for the whole question, that fa minus ff is equal to ma. 
I'm trying to find the acceleration, so that means that 10 minus 1.96 divided by 5 is 1.6 meters per second squared. The acceleration of the bottom block is 1. Point, is 1.6 meters per second squared. But if we had tried to use this method and just said, oh, 10 over 7, we would have ended up with 1.4. We would have gotten the answer wrong. We did have to break it up because once it slips, these two forces don't cancel out because this thing has a different acceleration than this thing. I've got to look just at this free-by diagram. I've got to take that friction into account. It's a different question than if there had been no block on top and this had been 7 kilograms. But as long as they don't slip, then they're essentially one unit. So we can just pretend that they're one of 7. But as soon as they slip, we can't do that. So if you found this challenging, hopefully now you understand it, and then you want to try part 2 before you watch the video, though, of course, and see if you can get the answer to that one.